Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna make Dua Lipa's Met Gala look or we're gonna try to recreate it because it's a whole thing. Like if you don't know what I'm talking about this is the dress that she wore for the Met Gala 2023. The theme was in honor of Carl Karl Lagerfeld, who is a German designer who uh, was the creative director of Chanel. He passed away in 2019, so they made this whole theme of um, honoring Karl Lagerfeld for the Met, which was incredible. If you ask me, there were so many gorgeous looks. Not only, you know, Dua Lipa's look, which was my favorite, like, by far, but there were so many other amazingly beautiful looks, and I, I just love the aesthetic of the whole night the classic look that Chanel just is so that was just you know perfect for my taste <laughs> the look that Dua Lipa wore is actually a wedding dress which I didn't know I had to look it up but it's an archive Chanel wedding dress which you know it's just amazing the fit the uh, silhouette the classic singed in corset top and then the ball gown and the fabric like the classic Chanel tweed I'm just, I, I can't even tell you how much I love this, but it, I, I am just so in love with it. So what's best than recreating this look? So on my Instagram yesterday, so by the way, just for you to get like a sense of time, <laughs> it's Tuesday today. I hope you don't hear the lawnmower too much outside. It's Tuesday today. The video will be up this Sunday, so I always have a week in advance. <laughs> I asked yesterday if you were interested in this look. I thought about that whenever the Met Gala happened already, but I always only make up my project topics on the Monday before the video goes live. So yesterday on Monday, I uh, asked you guys if you were interested in that look specifically. You guys said yes. Basically everybody said yes, <laughs> which was to me like, okay, well, it's this week then. We have to be um, super spontaneous. And uh, then I was thinking about the fabric choices. Obviously I don't have a Chanel fabric. <laughs> <laughs> like where should I get that? So I was looking up similar fabrics that I was able to get here where I live and I found three different options that you guys voted on and I actually did not listen to you and I went to buy the one that was my favorite. It's actually a furniture fabric furniture fabric like this is boucle in this off-white color it also has like some darker threads in it but it's pretty thick which usually for clothing is not really what you would go for but for a corset and like this big ball gown skirt this is really nice so I went ahead and bought this fabric I bought five meters I'm not gonna make like a full floor length ball gown I was thinking maybe doing a mini version so that would be nice let's see about that today we're just gonna make the corset because that's already a lot and yesterday I went ahead and sampled the corset I made the pattern uh, from the bodice of this dress yet again I changed a whole bunch you know like there's a lot of things going into to, that would be too much to explain right now. So I'm gonna link the pattern for the bodice, for the corset bodice down below, if you're interested in getting that. There is to say though, the corset is, like I made it to fit me. So for any corset pattern that you get, there is an absolute must to sample the corset because that needs to fit perfectly on your specific body and no body is the same so if you get my pattern you need to sample it and change it up that is an absolute must so if it doesn't fit you perfectly it's not because the pattern is wrong or bad or anything it's just because your body is different to mine which is probably everybody's body is different to mine so that's just normal you need to change it up and like fit it to your body to have the perfect corset block basically but then once you have that you can use that as a base block for any other corset that you might want to make or any other you know dress that might have a corset top so that is something if you're interested and corsetry and stuff like that and the look and silhouette and whatever that's something you might want to get into to have a base link is down below if you're interested in that I sampled the corset out of my green denim fabric I made these removable 
lace up backings thingies with like eyelets so I can just take it off and keep it somewhere so that I can put uh, this onto another sample or onto this so that I can try it on which is something really neat. I saw that actually on Hesariel costumes because she made like a corset not too long ago which I absolutely loved. She made like a removable try out corset lace up thing. <laughs> she also, you know, added a busk in the front, which this dress does not have. Sadly, also no zipper, so we have to get back to actually lacing up the corset. <laughs> One week ago, I was saying like, oh, is that a zipper? So cool. And now I'm like, am not this time. And that's what it looked like. It looked really nice to begin with. There were a couple of issues, like the hip was too small. So I just clipped into the seam there and added a little bit of fabric so that I know how much to add. And then there was a tiny bit too loose in the front. And yeah, that was basically all I had to do, which was amazing. I thought that I can singe in my waist a tiny bit more. So I just removed a little bit of width at the waist. And now I have my fabric cut out and prepared. I used another layer for my interlining, which has a very thick interfacing ironed on. So this is like super sturdy now, but we're gonna make it even more sturdy with a few boning channels. So that's what I did. I overlocked around it because boucle frays like hell. And now we can go ahead and actually start the sewing part. So let's go. Okay, so that is my pattern right here. As you can see, I have this bust insert right here. And that's it's pretty nice to sew actually. I was thinking, oh no, with this corner, it's gonna be like a hassle to get like a crisp, nice corner, but it's actually pretty easy if you do it right. So you're gonna find on your pattern another point down here, which marks the end of your cup insert. Let me just put that on my pattern as well. And what I did was I took right sides of the side front and the cup insert and sewed it together by aligning the notch here, the bust notch, and down here and up here. You're gonna find notches everywhere for that so that it is like sewn together with the side front. So let's quickly do that. So it looks like this. Now I want to iron the seam allowance open, so I'm going to use my tailor's hem for that. Can you see it? No. Okay, I think I have to change my background. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. So now after I've ironed this, you can see how the seam bubbles up. So for that, you need to cut towards the stitching line every like two centimeters or so. You can also cut out some triangles to make it even better to be able to lay flat basically. So you're just taking out a tiny bit of seam allowance, which allows the whole thing to lay flat. And now with everything opened, I'm just gonna go over that again and down here you want to clip towards the notch so that this seam allowance can be used to put on the other side and we can take this off. And same to here, you want to cut towards the notch so that this seam allowance here lays flat and this can be opened up. And now this right here is an okay seam to sew. So like it's not too curvy, it's not like it doesn't have any weird edges, it just continues on. So it's super easy to sew the front panel onto here. You want to match up all of the notches as well. You can see right here where the notch is, is where you cut into the piece, is where you have to align your cup insert notch. And then you want to match up your waistline as well. And sew the front panel on. There's like a whole bunch of seam allowance here, so I'm gonna try to just cut it down as much as I can. And then probably here at the waistline, you wanna cut towards the stitching line as well because here it curves. And now we can go ahead and also iron this open. <laughs> And now we can repeat the same for the other side. 
that's what it looks like now. So I'm really pleased with how everything fits together. And this is the inside. So everything is nicely ironed open. And now we can already go ahead and put the back together and then also, you know, close the corset basically. <laughs> so for the back, we're basically also just gonna close the uh, dividing seams. We're gonna leave the center back open. We're gonna put the lacing panels on there still, which we're gonna prepare in a, in a bit. So I'm gonna start with this dividing seam right here, just putting right sides together. You're gonna find a notch here on both panels that has to get matched up. And probably here, it's actually smart to cut towards the stitching line beforehand because we have opposite curves here. And if you cut in here, it's just easier to open the seam up and to sew. And now I'm gonna use my needle to match up the points. And that's what you wanna have in the end. So when you put these together, you wanna make sure that the stitching line, which continues to up here, is gonna be right at the edge that's gonna form here. You don't want to have like this or anything else. You want to have the stitching line visually continue towards the corner that's gonna open up here. And by the way, I'm just using the first needle to put both points together and then I'm putting a needle in from a pretty stark angle so that it doesn't move around. Otherwise, if you do this and then that, it just moves around the fabric too much in my opinion. So I like to go in at an angle already and out at an angle and then it just stays however you had the fabrics match up beforehand. And right here, And now with that prepared, I can go ahead and close the seam. And that's the first seam done. Now we're gonna add the back panel here, which is pretty straightforward. It's like just a straight kind of seam. Let's do that. Okay, I finished the back piece and I also added the lacing panel right here to the back, which is already boned and I already hand sewed the eyelets there. So I'm gonna show you how I did that with the other side. So I have the back lacing panel cut out and put interfacing on it. I also overlocked around the edges because of the boucle. After that, I am going to iron the panel in half like this and put right sides together on the upper corner to close the small edge right here for this finished edge here at the neckline. Once that's sewn together, I'm going to turn this right sides out. I'm going to use a pointy tool to pop the edge out right there and I'm going to iron that again. And now the first thing that I did for the other side was actually add the boning channel to the folded corner here on this side. So I'm just stitching, like top stitching five millimeters next to the fold line to add the boning channel. I'm using this five millimeter plastic boning right here to insert it. I'm going to round the edges and I'm also going to melt down the end here so that it just inserts nicer, which I'm going to do now. And make sure that it goes all the way up to the edge because there is the seam allowance on the inside. So it might be a bit difficult to actually get up until the very edge and not just where the seam allowance starts. Sometimes it wants to, you know, not go any further. And then just gonna cut this and take out a bit more to cut down the seam allowance. And I know from here that it's gonna get a bit longer than the actual piece itself. So I'm just gonna cut more off than actually just one centimeter. And now I'm going to transfer the eyelet points to the other side to get like a parallel result. And I'm measuring inwards 1.5 centimeters. I'm doing that by eye now. I did that by ruler for the other side. And here at the waistline, I'm doing two 1.5 centimeters apart. The waistline is right here so that I can lace up from the upper part and from the lower part and tie at the waist. And now I'm gonna just sew in the eyelets. 
into this piece as well. Okay, now that that's done, the eyelets are in, we can go ahead and also add another boning channel to the other side of the eyelets, which I already did here. So I'm just gonna top stitch next to the eyelets and then five millimeters next to that. Let's add the boning and I'm gonna add the boning the other way. So this curves this way. So I'm gonna add boning this side up so that it just lays flatter like that. And now we can add the other side, which I'm going to add the finished line right here, the finished edge right where the stitching line of my back panel is. You can see here. I'm gonna make sure that the waistline matches up with this eyelet right here so that they're gonna sit on the exact same position like that. And to make everything super flat, I'm going to uh, put all of the seam allowance towards the corset side away from the lacing panel. And I'm just gonna top stitch at like five millimeters next to it so that it lays flat as this side. And that's the back completely done. So basically we just need to put right sides of front and back pieces together at the side seams and at the shoulder seams and then the corset is already a full bodice that we can bone and such. So we're gonna leave the shoulder open for now and just close the side seams on both sides. And let's also cut into the waistline here. I added, by the way, a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to the side seam here, just in case you have to alter it or it doesn't fit perfectly, you know? So there's just a little bit of more room that you could take out if you need it. Let's iron this. So I've been thinking whether I want to add boning to the outer shell of the corset or if I want to add boning to the lining layer that I will add on top to hide all the seams. And I think I'm actually going to add boning to the outer shell because I have enough seam allowance. If I go like five millimeters next to the seams here, I have enough space to add boning. So I think I will do that. Maybe I'll add tape boning channel tape especially to the center front for for sure and maybe additional other ones to stabilize the shape even further but I think I'll start with this seam right here the side seam the long seam right here that is not curved and then I'll see how the shape looks like and then eventually add other channels with like just a twill tape that I have this is like a centimeter wide so it's perfect to add boning channels and I'll see where I go from there.
So I went ahead and off camera sewed together the lining layer for my corset. It's the same thing as for the shell. I used also the same pattern because everything will be sewn in by hand and you have a little bit more room to adjust everything, I guess. Everything apart from the neckline. We're gonna do that by machine. That's why I already pinned it on like this. I think we can go ahead and do that already. I made sure to match up all the notches and all of the seams so that they lay right on top of each other. And then I can now go ahead and apart from these types of seams here like the shoulder seams I'm going to sew everything else together and probably also try to understitch so I'm gonna do the neckline here first then understitch and then do probably the other necklines understitch them as well as much as I can and do the armholes at the very end because I don't think that I'll need to understitch them there and then we're gonna do the shoulders and stuff like that so let's go So what I'm doing here for the uh, straps is something unconventional, I guess, but it's fine because we're gonna add a ribbon here anyways. Usually you would put this and then put right sides over and um, sew the shoulder strap shut, but because my fabric is just too thick and too sturdy, there is no way I can actually do that. So what I will be doing instead is just put the front strap into the back strap like this and add pins so that it's safe and in place. And I'm just gonna hand sew both layers in place so that it's like neat and tidy, especially on the lining side because it's not overlocked there, as you can see. And then I'm gonna add a top stitch around all of the folded edges so that the lining stays down because it is very thick and it's probably not just gonna lay down on its own, even though once we close the hem and such. So I'm just gonna add a top stitch and since I'm gonna add ribbon over top of the neckline and the shoulder strap, like all the way to here, nothing of that will be visible. And with the fabric being as textured as it is, it probably won't be visible anyways. Like you can barely see the stitching lines of the boning channel. So I'm just gonna add one over the arms eye as well and fix everything in place that way. And I think that's the best solution for this. So let's sew this down and then add the top stitches around the neckline and arms eye. So 
So what I'm thinking for the uh, hemline here, I pinned everything together already so that all of the seams match up and I think I'm just going to add a top stitch here to keep everything together. And to hide this ugly seam down here, I wanted to do some ribbons anyways. So now I grab the salvage edge of my fabric, which looks like this. So the, this right here is the salvage edge and then here the fabric will continue on. And I just grabbed this and tried out a few things or like a few looks with this type of material here. And I think I come to the conclusion that I really like this look right here as somewhat of a binding, not really, but like it has somewhat the look of a binding. So I would cut like one centimeter next to the selvage to fold it over and then either hand sew it in place or probably what I will do is like put right sides together and fold it down and then either top stitch again or hand sew, I'm not sure yet because I want to add a black detail here because in the original the ribbon around the neckline, arms, eye and hem is in black so it's like a black and white ribbon uh, sewn onto there and I'm thinking it would be nice to add maybe a satin band I decided against the black embroidery or like embellishment because I felt like this just looks really really nice already I really like how this has this border and then the fringe right here and I feel like this is enough so I will continue doing that for the neckline and the armhole what I did was this is the right side of my binding and I put this right on top here and stitched where the salvage starts. This is like five millimeters next to my edge here. And then I folded this up and stitched again up here. And I'm gonna do the same for the armhole as well. And after that, I'm done with the corset. <laughs> And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. So we're gonna do the skirt in part two of this series. I am super happy with how this turned out. It's super sturdy and like a really well-made corset that holds up its shape. So I can't wait to try this on and to style this on its own. Obviously, I'm gonna show you how this looks like on me. So I'm gonna style it in a more modern way until we have the skirt and then obviously I'm gonna show you that. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sunday so you can keep an eye out for that. Go ahead and follow me on my social media. Links are in the description down below. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store where you will also find this pattern right there. So go check that out. You will find plenty of other patterns with video tutorials on them. A special thank you to my channel members. You'll get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below. So thank you for supporting me that way and yeah thanks so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!